Hello everyone, I'm Aubrey Morrow, and welcome back to another episode of the Mystery Mold series. This will be mold number six, and I'm really excited about this one because it has a lot of blank surface on it for me to just kind of do what I want with it. It's, and I decided to do something a little bit different than I have been doing. I'm sure you guys will appreciate that. Um, so I'm here I am just pouring it up, and it took a lot of slip. That hole is pretty large so it took almost that whole jug there but I let that one sit for about 35 minutes just because I wanted the walls to be of a decent thickness uh, I think that walls ended up being around a quarter of an inch thick which is kind of what I was going for um, so there I am just pouring it out and then I'll prop it up to let it sit upside down for a while so that the slip doesn't fall back into the mold and create thick spots. And here is the reveal. Maybe. <laughs> we got a vase and it's a beautiful shape and I was so excited to see that. Um, there's a lot of potential with this piece. And I only made three of them, but on each one I did something a little bit different. I also want to make more of these just to go back and do more cutesy type style stuff. But I really wanted to just experiment with um, glaze combinations on this one. Uh, so you'll see the, they turned out beautiful in the end, so I'm excited for you guys to see those. Uh, just cutting off the excess where the pour spout was um, and then I'll take some time to clean up all of the seams and make sure that everything just looks smooth um, just because this piece is such a smooth finish uh, you'll probably see any raised areas underneath the glaze um, so I'm just cleaning those up the best that I can. I'm not perfect at that yet. It's hard to get it to look like it's not a slip casted piece, um, but that I'm sure just comes with time and practice and experience and that's fine. I do wish I would have taken more time to make sure that the base was flat, although I did get them fairly flat. Uh, they just rocked a little bit and with a vase having water and flowers in it you're gonna want it to be as sturdy as possible um, on one of my previous videos a lovely um, viewer suggested that I put some water on my table and just uh, rub it around on there to make it flat and I didn't know to do that at this point this I filmed this quite a while back um, but in the future that's definitely what I do what I will do when I make more of these which I plan to because it turned out so cute and then here I am with the mud tool sponge. This is the white sponge, which is probably my favorite one just because of the absorb absorbency and the finish of it. Um, but that was the right sponge to use for this application here just to get the piece really smooth and ready for glazing. For the glazing on this piece, I decided to try something new, kind of an experiment. That was Mako's Iron Wash, which I'll put on the rim here. And I did put it on at full strength. I did not water it down for this. Um, so I just kind of slathered some along the rim, just one coat, it was a thick coat. Um, and then over that, I will put three coats of Amigo's Honey Flux over that. I wanted to see how the Honey Flux and the Iron Wash would interact together and I think it turned out pretty cool. Um, I'm excited to experiment with that a little bit more. I bought the Iron Wash and the Manganese Wash and um, I had bought them to do an antler handle for a mug because I was wanting something more uh, rustic looking so I decided to try those washes um, and those are gonna go a long way because it does not take much on a piece to get the effect you're looking for uh, so there's a lot of potential with those washes so I'm excited to see what else I can do with them if you guys have suggestions for those like what you use them for um, what they look really great with just let me know because 
I'm all ears. Um, so I should have actually glazed the inside of these first and I forgot. So here I'm just going back in with my brush. I'm just putting a single coat inside. You're not going to see it, but I did want to coat it with glaze just to make sure um, that it would hold water really well. So one coat should be plenty for that. And while I had the Honey Flux out, I decided to use the Honey Flux on the other two vases as well, but I'm going to be doing something different with those. So each one of these is a little bit different. I went ahead and did the three coats of Honey Flux on the other two vases while I had my jar of glaze out. So here I am just applying it, um, not in any particular pattern or anything. Honey Flux does move, um, so I, I do try to do it in horizontal stripe applications just because I want it to look like ribbons of glaze as it drips. Um, if you do it in vertical, it kind of looks a little bit stripey, so I've noticed that doing it horizontal does look better but I do it sloppy so it's not you know straight lines that I'm putting on there on the second base I decided to do the honey flux and chun plum combo which I have used many times and it always turns out so gorgeous and you'll see why I believe that in the end um, so the chun plum is a very thick glaze so I only do two coats of it um, and I kind of stagger them so that first coat goes you know three quarters of the way down um, and then the second coat will just go maybe a half of the way down and that's plenty um, the third vase, I went with Blue Routile, and I've also done this combo in the past, and it also looks gorgeous. Um, they kind of have the same movement, um, just, you know, blue versus pink. So I think these will look really good together or purchased apart, um, but I just love both of these combos, so I thought they would look great on a vase. And here we are, we're gonna pull them out of the kiln. And this is that third one with the blue rutile. So again, that was three coats of honey flux and two coats of blue rutile. And look how gorgeous and drippy that is. I just love the variation in the blues. And um, this next one is the chun plum in honey flux. And I love this pink color. Um, and the third one is the honey flux with the iron wash underneath, which turned out really cool. I, I was actually really pleased with that. And here's your final look of each piece. I am so happy with the way that these turned out and I can't wait to make more of them. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to share everything that I use and I really appreciate you guys watching, but make sure you go to the channel and click subscribe to make sure you're notified of when new videos come out. I have a lot of stuff in the works and stay tuned because I have an interesting Christmas piece coming out on the next mystery mold. See you guys next time. Bye.